Hello everybody, Namaste. and welcome to episode 46 of the Spy Squadron podcast. We are fresh from pre-release number three. We are in the middle of our pre-release season yep. uh, as, uh, as of recording, and mm-hmm. then when this video goes up tomorrow, we will still have two left. And we'll still have three left. Three left We'll be going to the one in the evening, mm-hmm. and then we've got... This is, we're filming this Sunday afternoon, so this is a quick turnaround for this one. Um, but yeah, we've been to three pre-releases. Um, they've been a blast. They've been so They've fun. been very, very fun. Enjoyed them immensely. I think, uh, I think Sealed for Set 2 is more fun than Sealed for Set 1. Because Absolutely. there's less removal, and the new mechanics are so much fun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um... But we have something pretty special for you this episode. We are not going to be sitting on this couch for very long. We're going to be moving it over to a voiceover that we're going to do, um, which involves footage from our latest pre-release, um, where we pulled some pretty cool cards. You'll see it on the pre-release. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about how we went about deck building, why we chose the colors we chose, yeah. and what we were thinking kind of as we're going about it. And then we'll cut back here. So we're going to do that now. We're going to cut across to past James and past Ooh. Reese, but it'll still be us, James, and us, Reese, because we're about to record the audio for that clip. But the video will be from past us. It all makes sense. I promise. Time travel is wrong. Ooh. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's us from the past, opening up, opening up pre-release packs. I struggled, I struggled so much. I was too <laughs> excited, and it caused me to be slow. Oh, uh, absolutely. It's a very easy thing to get too excited about these things. Uh, okay, one thing I want to talk about while we're opening them now, the, hi- the, the, the tacos, someone ordered tacos, but the hyperspace oh. foil starter leaders, oh my gosh. They're I, so pretty. I wish they, I actually wish they did that for set one. No, absolutely. It I They're cannot so agree more. Good. I'm I would have been so happy with just hyperspace versions of those ones. Um, I have not played Moff Gideon or Mando yet. Not spoiler yet, alert for what I'm playing. Yeah. Um, haven't really pulled for it just yet. Yeah, it's they, like Gideon's a pretty easy one to pivot to, and mm. I think I probably could have gone Gideon here, but I got so much of a specific type. Uh, of card, which we'll talk about in a sec, that I just ended up pivoting towards it because it just made more sense. First leader CAD. There he is. I'm he he actually that. needs no introduction. He doesn't. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have. Yeah, um, he'll be disappointed in me. Um, <laughs> I think we both have the same idea when it comes to this, and that's immediately sorting into piles of color. You want to see how much you get of one color to help dictate where you can go to. Because chances are you're probably going to pull the same amount of hero and villain cards for each color uh, a lot of the time. Um, but pulling just the general glue of the deck, like the middle of the road yep. neutral pieces, is what you really want to pay attention to. So sorting into piles for me is easy because then after that I can count, figure out where I'm sitting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think like also there's just like the thing of like, yeah, you're going to get kind of similar numbers, but you're definitely going to get more of one um, color and that is going to drive what you're going to do. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, we're going to get pretty excited here pretty soon. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, just like, I don't know. I don't know why we would. I don't know why we would. You might have seen another corner of my eye. That it's... is a showcase. Um, oh, oh, oh. And if you feature one below GP solo. And if you would like to see the audio that happens during that, this is what that sounds like. (laughs) Yes! So yeah, we were pretty excited about that one. Yeah, look. I got an IG showcase at my first pre-release for set one. And now that James gets a Java showcase in set two pre-release, it it pans out. The Spy Squadron will just simply alternate showcases a pre-release obviously we didn't know this was going to happen when we decided to film this one in particular um but i am very happy with that and the one thing we did say last week and we've stuck to that is if you pull a showcase you have to play you have to run the showcase so we know who james's deck uh and leader is for pre-release i just kind of work gonna work out what um color we're pairing with him i think for a future gameplay to tease it as well uh, James is actually really happy with this leader because it is one that he has been building a really 
interesting deck around too. Yeah, we'll so, see whether I can pull yeah, the pieces for so, it to so, get it so together. Getting but getting a playable showcase is pretty huge. Yeah. Beats getting a thinner land. <laughs> Um, so cracking my way through my pack. You'd deck. enjoy a Lando, even if you didn't. I would love a Lando. You'd love a Lando. I'd love a Lando. It's the same reason I'd love an Afra. True. Um, Throwing every other leader out of here because obviously I'm playing Java. You know what's really weird about this pre-release season? Mm -hmm. I have pulled one red base and one green base, and the rest of my bases every single pre-release have been blue and yellow. And the <laughs> only way, the only reason I have other bases is because I've asked for them. People, I was like, really? I, yeah, I was like, can I have that? Hey, there we go. We got a rule, rule for respect and a foil marauder. You know what that's going in? Ooh, that's, hunter, that's baby. Going in hunter baby. I've not pulled a single hunter yet. Yeah, I haven't either. I'm a bit sad. I'd be keen to play him in um, in yeah, a sealed environment. I love him. Yeah, I agree. It'd be really fun. And then if you get like your double ups of your uh, your legendary units, that'd be nicer to be able to cycle mm. them. Like um, in this, I pulled two of the Toro. Toro Callahan's or whatever his name is, mm -hmm. the three cost when you play a bounty hunter, ping it and untap him. Uh, and that guy did a lot of work. Um, yeah. Um, so what do you think at this stage? Um, you can see kind of like putting it out, you have what, Cad and Hondo yeah. and so what looks like Bosk? I've got Cad, Hondo, Bosk, and then I've got uh, Gar, Ray and Kira. So I'm, at this point I'm going, right, I'm villain. And thankfully, if you look as well, you see that I've got one heroic card, which is a smuggle heal three, and I've got like five or six villains. Yeah, cards. wow. Initially, here I go, awesome. I'm gonna play Hondo because I, yeah. I actually really like Hondo, and I I was like, cool. I've got it. I think I've got enough to build him. I go and search through my cards in a second. You and as we go, we'll figure it out. I actually don't have that much smuggle. Which is a bit heartbreaking because I would have loved to play Hondo. I had I had the same thing on one of my pre-releases uh, that I pulled Hondo. I was like, yes, let's pull Hondo. And I looked through and I had one weak way pirates and no other smuggle. It's the curse because at once, I, I, I like the pre-release, um, one of my other pre-releases, I got like three weak way pirates. I got two jet packs. I got like yeah. commission, two timely interventions. Like if I had pulled a Hondo, I, and I just didn't get Hondo leader. Yeah, I, it being a I rare pulled, is rough in that situation yeah. where it's like, it's the same thing with um, um, some of the other rare leaders. They're a little bit like, because it's like you could pull well for them, mm. but then if you don't pull them as well, it's yeah, tough. it's just rough. I think um, here as well, you're seeing me sort through cards because I'm tossing up. Uh, my, my progression is pretty interesting here. I go from Hondo to checking for bounties for Bosk and bounty hunters for Bosk. Mm. And then I, I end up settling uh, because I realize I have a lot of Underworld uh, and like a lot of Underworld. Mm. So I settle on CAD. I've found that a card that has surprised me and I haven't actually used it yet, but I've had it used against me a few times. That Jawa does work. Yeah, it's actually pretty solid. It's it's a draw. Like it's it's just you draw, you draw grab a card from your energy, you replace that, and you can just get one of yeah. your cards from energy, which is actually pay, pay huge. Pay three, draw a card for a two-two body. I got used against me today, and I was like, hmm, I like that little guy. I like yeah. Little diamond. Here you go. You can see me counting out my smuggle cards, and I realized that I really don't have a lot. Mm. And then I start checking for for red smuggle cards in case I can go for red Hondo. Yeah, <laughs> um, I really wanted to play. Hard. Yeah, you're really, really trying to get that, it <laughs> get it through. But I only got the one. Um, I'm kind of deciding on what color that I'm going to play with um, Jabba, and it becomes pretty obvious pretty quickly that it's going to be blue. Yeah, um, I get a few blue cards, including two covert strengths, um, two uh, fell the dragons, and a rival's mm. fall to really get that. We also kind got of... Mom Pike. Mm. Like just being able to and I'll know. tell you what, that card did wonders. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That card was, was was really interesting in being like, awesome. I'll give like over the course of three turns, three shields to this one unit that I don't, I'm not going to care about, and I don't just like out of the yeah. way. Um, I think so. I think that card is definitely going to be really interesting and constructed to see what people because like you choose where it goes for them too. So it's one of those cases we can True. kind of like, I'm going to put like three, sh uh, I'm going to put a shield over here on this. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to take it down. Yeah. You should have the dragon. It. I think it's pretty good. I, I Like, a card that really surprised me was Jetpack. Like, I played mm. it a bit in the Hondo deck. So, I was like, ooh, I should maybe, like, look out for this. And that card straight up won me 
like two of my names. Yeah. Um, Jetpack is huge. I think Jetpack is one of those cards. I think it definitely won maybe my first free release. Yeah. Um, with another card that I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but that Jetpack was absolutely huge in, um, in conjunction with the Clan Ren challenges. Yeah, just getting plus two, plus oh. Raid 3, they get a shield on the turn. Because, like, they're going to be swinging. So the shield is coming off the turn yeah. that's going on. And they get the Overwhelm. So they get the Overwhelm. So they're swinging with an extra 5. So they're swinging for 8 with Overwhelm. Pretty, um... I've heard good things about that. See, now I'm counting out my, my green. I realise I've got the Crumb. Ah, oh, the Crumb. I love the Crumb. Bit of capture mechanic going on. I will say that 5 cost 3 for capture. Mm. Real Does work, helpful. yeah, absolutely. Real helpful in sealed... Again, not great. In yeah, really got a lot of villainy cards there. Yeah, I did. I, I don't think I've gotten that many villainy cards at all. I, I think it. it's been very lacking on the hero and villainy two side. Two of the Toros. One of the two cost three, three Overwhelm Bounty Hunters. That mm -hmm. pings for two. One of the three cost three, two Sentinel Spaces. And one of the No Bargain, the discarded draw card. All no them, Bargain is yeah, all, absolutely huge. All of those cards were incredible. So here I am. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I can maybe play... Uh, Moth Blue or Garfax and Green as well. Actually, I go through a, uh, a lot of like process here because I had my heart set on Hondo and then I was like so sure I could play him, realized I couldn't and then was like, what do yep. I do? I'm locked in here. I got that Jabba Blue going on and now I'm just finding the cards that I need to be able to do it. Um, oh, Jab Jab. That, I, that one cost rare villainy um, altering the deal... Um, is absolutely huge. Being able to just discard something you've captured, just get rid of it for one, is genuinely actually really good. And it, while it's a rare, I've pulled already pulled like three of them. Well, that's great because I think they go in your constructed deck as well. A leader mm. that has capture a unit, and then we, we were discussing this earlier today. This card here, I want to talk about this Reptile Hunter in Jabba is a turn one play. Yeah, because you can tap, give, give it bounty, bounty and then play Reputable Hunter. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Even that is that's really good. Yeah, in constructed. A three, four. Absolutely, that's a three, actually four. a really good turn one play. Just being like, all right, I'm going second. Awesome. You play something, I'll give it bounty, and then I'll play this Reptile Hunter. And if you're playing Mono Green Java with ECL, you can just turn one ECL it in, mm. and then like kill that unit with bounty. And then play Salacious really Crumb. Play Salacious Crumb for free. Heal one from your base, and then you are so far ahead of your opponent. Yeah. Um. So it's pretty pretty wild, pretty wacky. So, um. And, but yeah, going back to that, no, uh, altering the deal, like, I think that's a three of in the constructed because you're probably going to, you, your leader says steal. Mm. And one thing I think that's super powerful is you're, you, you're capturing the unit and you're, you capture your opponent's biggest unit. And then they go, oh, okay, well, I can kill the unit that's captured it. So I'm going to yep. swing this unit in, trade this unit out, and then I'm going to, you know, play my force choke on it and then I'll get my unit back. But on the actions in between that, you alter the deal and remove the unit. So they've mm -hmm. swung a unit and, it, and it's died. And then you've, and they've gone, cool, I'm going to force choke this next and get my 10-10 Devastator back or whatever. Yeah. And then you just go kill the Devastator as well. Mm, absolutely. Uh, and it's, it's a terrifying thing um, that you can do of just like, this is a one-cost removal spell in that situation mm -hmm. where it's just like, oh, it's okay, I'll get it back. It's like, you won't. You definitely won't. And um, there's definitely some times that came in clutch during this pre-release. Um, if you guys check out the gameplay for this week, it is going to be a match of mine and a match of Reese's from this pre-release, running these decks. Uh, but I think we're starting to see Reese finally work out what he nope. is actually playing. Nope. No, it's still nope. going. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, what red cards have I got for boss? <laughs> we're not even there. Yet. Like, I think the, the thing is, once I... Once I'm like figure out that I'm playing CAD, mm -hmm. it's so quick. I'm like, yeah, I've got CAD and green. Is me having too many cards and taking those little spaceships out because I don't really care if it's the three five. I do not want them ramping. Yeah, I it just, just look, it, I just, it just don't. It's just not kosher. You don't. Yeah. What like there are a couple of the bounties which aren't like you know the two three draws and stuff like that. That's fine. It's not too much of a big deal there. Mm. But like. Oh, ramping in sealed is real bad because like the sealed bombs are so hard to deal with because of the lack of removal in yeah. the sealed. I think you, I think if when we watch out my the game if you go watch the gameplay there is actually a thing to be said of keep, that I should have kept these in specifically for that first game. Yeah. 
but um, we'll get to that when we get to that because I'll tell you what, Space Race apparently is a thing. Yeah, there is a lot of space units this set. Like, a lot. Like, I nearly got Space Raced in one of my games. Mm -hmm. um, like, I thankfully... I, I, I won both of the games we played because it was best of three at this pre-release. He's done it. He's put it down. I put There he is. It's Cad Bane. It's Cad Bane. It's, there he is. You realise, wait a minute. <laughs> All these are Underworld. All these are Underworld. I've got two of the five cast Underworld grabs. I've got, <laughs> like, the, the Bounty Hunters. I've got the... Two cost three threes. I got the salacious crumb, um, but like the the pre-release we went to was um this one was a best of three. I managed to win the two two of two of my games, um, but like wow, it was pretty full on. Yeah, absolutely. Like the just the lack of removal this set makes trading so much more valuable mm -hmm. than in set one where it was just like I don't care. Because I pulled a force choke and the open fire. And I'm so down. sick of those two cost two two space units. Which ones? The two cost two two smuggle for three. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, the green. It's one. like I like I played so many of them over the course of this pre-release, and I'm so, oh, I got so sick of them. <laughs> I was like, I don't want you. I don't want you here. Go away. Here we go. I've gone. I've gone. Cad Bane. I checked the red underworlds, and then I checked the green underworlds, and went. I have the crumb, and I'm not gonna lie. Salacious, oh, kind of pu pushed it over the edge for me. Is... You can see me now setting aside my underworld cards <laughs> and my um, my uh, non underworld cards just to see if I have enough. One of my pre-releases at Versa Cad, um, that had three of the capture three cost capture, give a shield to a bounty hunter, relentless, pursuit. relentless pursuits, yeah. and. It was a nightmare. I got three Hunter of the Haxian Brood. So I got that is three, a good so I got card. Three of the four three when a unit has bounty shielded. I can I actually came in with shielded quite a lot, mm. which was insane for Toro because I'd play him, swing for three, play yep. this comes in with a shield. I ping the shield off, untap Toro, swing for three. I did that so much with this cat deck. Mm. Um, so the Haxian Broods were nuts. I got I got the blood as well. Yep, the blood. And like once I'd laid it out, you cannot... I was like, oh, I just have a Cad Bane deck. You know what? A card that I have not pulled in pre-release, and I have not even seen anyone play in pre-release, mm -hmm. but I think he's going to be an absolute monster as pre-release, Crosshair. I, I have not I, seen I, a single right. one pulled. I haven't seen anyone pull him either. You also now will re see me realize I do not have the green base. So I'm going to go into my folder and grab one because in pre-release, <laughs> you're allowed to use any common base You're allowed to use any want. common base you want. Uh, my deck's done. I'm good. I got a couple of sentinels. I got a couple of removal spells. Um, I would love to have seen a crumb. Man, but that card, I had one of him. He did so much work. Absolutely. He's so good. Oh, he's so good. He's actually such a fun card to use as well. Like be laying out my sentinels. Simply him. That's right. Oh, we were having a discussion here because I was like trying to figure out what to cut. And James was like, all I got to do is storm. Yep. All, all I got to do, do is storm. And then my, removal. my removal. The sentinels. And trust me, my games went long. It was my two covert strengths. <laughs> Give him a heal in that Jabba. Yeah. Putting counters on him. I think um, one of my, my first games, there was a lot of CAD at this pre-release. Mm. And what was really funny about it is half of them did not have enough Underworld. And yeah. the other half had the right amount. So my first game I played in a green, green CAD mirror match. And um, my opponent, um, he didn't pull a lot of Underworld cards. And I asked him why. And he was like, oh, I went with CAD because he's my only yellow leader. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, well, why not just run Moff Gideon? And he was like, I'm not going to lie to you. I did not think of that. So, um, it's, it was his first pre-release. So, it's one of those things where be diligent because you can use Moff Gideon and Mando. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my second opponent, who, which is uh, the one I played against in gameplay, um, had a really good Cad Red deck. So. Mm. My, my yeah, Cad, Cad Bane is definitely um, there was def there's definitely it's definitely a lot easier to go Cad than I expected. Uh, we were talking about Cad last week and yeah. saying that if you pull the Underworld for him, it's good. But I think Cad is just a really strong leader. I think every single time I thought he had six health, 
And they flip him, and he's got eight health, and I'm like, oh, yeah, right. Eight's super inconvenient to deal with. Oh, it's so much health for to be coming out there. Like for four. Mm. So nuts. And then pinging for two. I'm all ready to go. Um, I'm nearly ready. (laughs) (laughs) Reese is just sleeving up his deck. Um... I learnt a lot about Jabba in this. I think that's one of the things about pre-releases is you can learn a lot. Um, my Jabba deck has changed a lot from before this pre-release to after this pre-release because I learnt a lot of things that went really well with Jabba and a lot of things that work really well. I, and... learned, uh, I learned how much I like Cad. Mm. I like Cad a lot. I like Salacious Crumb a lot. Yeah. Salacious B Crumb is certainly... A menace. I kind of want to put him in my Moff Some Gideon. Some would say obnoxious. I want to, I want to put him in Moff Gideon because he becomes a two-three overwhelm. He heals me. I, I have Yolaren, and he can ping damage on a unit, so I can get mm. more overwhelm in. Trust me, there's nothing funnier than being like, than having Yolaren and being like, yes, play Salacious, heal mm. two in my Java deck. It's just like it's so inconvenient. Tap. <laughs> Ping him, bounce him, Dim, play him, heal two. two. Done. I got two of the tanks as well. Mm, which was nice. That tank, that, is, that that tank so is so good. huge. It's underworld as well, so you're flipping it. And if Cad's out, you're just like, here's my 4-6 sentinel ping two. And they're like, oh, okay. Mm. And uh, it's, it's, it's smuggle closet. And, and we'll that's it. Bye. Let's get back to, back to, to the on the couch. <sighs> We're back from pre-release. Back from pre-release. Uh, Java Showcase. Yes, what? please. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. It was a good time. Well, I had a good time anyway. I had a great time. Um, but um, as we were talking about, um, we did record some of the games that we had at the pre-release. If you check out the gameplay this week, that'll be all Please about do. that. Um, we'll be so commenting over that as well. So look forward to that. Check that out. You get... and. Um, let us know what you think of it because it will be a more in-depth us talking True. over games, which True. is the first time we've kind of been doing that. Yeah, we're, com- um, we're like more commentating, so we've got a bit of yeah. hindsight going on. So absolutely check that out because um, that's going to be really interesting watch. But we're going to go over a couple of things that we have learnt from this pre-release. Um, a couple of things that after doing three pre-releases, we've changed our minds on yeah. from last week yeah. or... Absolutely still agree is fantastic. I mean, let's just tackle it because we just said it then. Cad Bane is easier to build. Uh, mm. It's still a deck that I think is harder to build around than the five leaders we suggested. Yes. But it's much easier to build around than we initially thought. I think there's just and we knew so much good. underworld. We knew there's just good. so much underworld. Yeah. We knew he was that good too. Like, we saw that leader. We know he's that good. We were not never like, he's not good. It was mm. just a matter of, did you have the underworld? And you, exactly. can, you can do it more frequently than I thought. Mm. So that's great. And and let me tell you, just like he was on the gameplay, he is so fun and he's so like, you need yep. to be on top of what you're doing, you need to be tapping a ping. Yep. That yellow doesn't normally get access to direct damage and this leader does and it's so huge even in pre-release when yeah, there's absolutely. like less removal, having removal on your leader's huge. Mm-hmm. Absolutely agree with that. Um, there's so many things where um, that one damage or that two damage can just make the difference. Mm. And it becomes so dangerous. Um, excuse me. I think uh, I think as well that I knew Smuggle was good. Mm. <clears throat> Smuggle is incredible. Like, incredible, incredible. Being able to have the ships come out, the weak way pirates are number one. But yep. one thing that I think with Smuggle that I, I neglected is you only have 30 card deck. Usually. Yeah. And I actually have decked out because unlike sure set one, there's less draw, but smuggle is draw because you're taking yeah. the top card and putting it in your resources. Yep. So I'm smuggling, I'm smuggling, I'm drawing two, I'm drawing two, you know, I'm playing no bargain, drawing a card, and suddenly I've only got two cards left, and I'm like, hmm, about to take six damage. Oh, what really? So be wary of that. Absolutely. Um, I still think covert strength is fantastic. I think that card yeah. is yeah. just a beautiful card. I used it today so helpful. with Bosk and it was so gross. Yeah, it's just so helpful and so cool. Um, I definitely think that the... Um, the, yeah, the, the... What's it called? The card that you said. Green, Hero, Sundari Protector. 
Um, this Sundari Protector is amazing. I actually have seen a lot less of them than I thought I would going yeah, around. That's wild. I've um, like seen I've seen like two. Yeah, I think they're they're uh, I think they're an uncommon. Um, Thank God that can't be Yeah, because if you saw a lot of those, it'd be wild. But I actually haven't seen that many, which I'm very happy about. You know what is a huge card? Mm-hmm. You know what is just such a good card? What is just is that such a three good card? cost prison like prison cell break or whatever it is. But where it pay, mm. pay three, deal three. If it's captured, you know, pay six. In a in a situation where there is no removal, That's open fire, uh, just baby. this smaller open fire. Yeah. Um, you do not need some a card to be captured. It is just a case of hey. No. And a lot of the removal is capture. Mm. So being able to get that out when someone's captured your stuff is so good. Like, yep. this, my, my Bosk deck this today was nuts. Like, I had two of those. I had two clients. I had two Van Brace. I had two mm-hmm. challenges. Like, I had, like, a lot of gross. some of the... Clan cha- Let's talk about Clan Challenges. Let's talk about Clan Let's Challenges. Because I the first pre-release that I went to, I ran... Fennec. Yeah, Good baby. lord, is Fennec incredible. He Let ran, me just say that absolutely out of the gate. Fennec. Um, Fennec is absolutely nutty. Um, and um, he won. He won clan the whole challenges. Pre-release. Yeah, clan challenges did what? Clan challenges yeah. with jetpack. Oh. Clan challenges with arm to the T. Both of these things coming out of smuggle for four. Beautiful. Love it. Could not love it anymore. Yeah, jetpack is really good like yeah. jet for those of you who don't know because we've talked about challenges you probably know about that jet pack is, is two cost yellow upgrade smuggle for four yellow mm-hmm. gives you a plus two plus oh but it gives it a shield until the next regroup phase then you remove the shield mm-hmm. so and this is this is all the support finn needed because you can remove the shield give it a shield that doesn't get removed at the end of the phase and it's just so good right Right? That's what... That's what we're... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my... I can't even with you. Um, but Jetpack is really good. And it's great because you can... Even smuggling it out for four is like... Yeah. So good. Um, smuggling Arm to the Teeth and Jetpack out for four... I think is both huge. Like you do not need to have keep them in hand. No way. You just be like, ah, you, you I'll, I'll use these later. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's so crazy. Mm-hmm. And then, um, there were a couple of things I really would have loved to play. I just haven't pulled them yet. And mm-hmm. that's Lando and Hondo. I really like. I want to play a Lando deck in sealed because it's probably the only time where he's going to be relatively good. Because the resources don't matter that like as much. If no, I you're absolutely get, if correct. If I can get a bomb out earlier, if I can get a bomb out earlier, mm, no, like, absolutely. I'm with no, with the lack of removal, I think it's definitely a thing. Um, Han is a deck that I would love to play. I have yes. not played a Han deck Getting yet. Getting any Cobb Vance? If you get Han and two Cobb Vance, that opens. I haven't pulled a single Cobb Vance. Neither have I. I haven't seen him yet. Cobb Vance and Cobb Vance. There's certainly some cards we haven't seen yet. Um, a lot of legendaries we haven't seen yet. Um, I've got a lot of the same. You've mm. got you've got two slices. I got. I one, got two slices. Uh, two rules of respect and two evacuations. Yeah, but it's been pretty um, it's been spread good. out. Can't we'll say that we have noticed a lot more than set one. Set two has does seem to have pre-release packs with no legendaries in it. Like a lot. I, like there's a, we have a bunch of people coming to these pre-releases. My, my first pre-release, I didn't get any. Mm. I, like the only the only reason I got a legendary at the end was because I opened my prize pack and there was one in it. In the actual kit, there was none. Yeah, and we've se- been seeing that a lot more than we did in that for, mm. in the first. Um, Weird. Um, yeah, so that's so if you're finding that you're having less legendaries than you did last time, don't feel bad. We all are. It's, it's also, every like almost everyone is like you have to get real lucky to get two or even three on that, on, on that bell curve too. This set. The legendaries aren't as far apart from the rares as they were set one. Mm. Like a lot, of, I see a lot of people still being like, "Maul is a rare." Yeah. Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. He feels like Django's a rare. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's so many cards that are just legendaries uh, with the R stamp that it yeah. doesn't really. So, at the end of the day, you're still not losing out on powerful cards. And the great thing is, decks like Cad Bane. You don't need a single legendary from set one or set two oh, to make no. that deck a S tier meta playable deck. No, and even even Boba Fett is just kind of it's nice, yeah, it's but I, there, there are days I don't even run Boba Fett in some of the my CAD builds. Yeah, 
So, like, honestly, Boba Fett for Cad is slow. Because your turn two play, you don't want to be playing the three, five ping. You mm. would rather play a two cost and a one cost. No, absolutely. Or like a one cost to McClunky back a Bazine to play the Bazine again. Yeah. And so Doing like, just straight shenanigans over just playing yeah. a decent unit. Like, Bo- I think it's weird because the Boba Fett unit is still like so valuable. But he does really only go in like one meta deck and mm. that's Boba. Yeah. Like, yeah, he goes into green and yellow Boba or just any deck you're building with Boba Fett. I mean, yeah, but... It's like interesting to see and then you look at cards like Darth Maul from this set where I run him in decks that don't have Underworld mm. because he's a 7-6-7 seven, seven ambush overwhelm. So like I have a Kylo Ren deck which is uh, which is my Sith deck and I just like discard a Maul give something plus 2 plus 2 swing and then pay 6 Palpatine's return he comes back Absolutely. I swing into something kill it <laughs> he, and then it's like okay like yeah he's taken 3 or 4 damage but what like kill him and then I Palpatine's return him again or yeah, you know, I Palpatine's return my Palpatine or my Vader so he just adds options whereas like the Boba Fett is great but it just feels a bit clunky it feels a bit clunky which is also a great card this set also a very good card this set Especially another card that I want to talk about um, that was is I didn't even know existed I'm not going to lie uh, I yeah, ran a little guy, bit out on this you showed it to me and I was like what is this? Um, I don't even know his Why name didn't I still. Why did the Fennec deck? He is a four cost heroism yellow um, cunning um, four four that says uh, smuggle for six. Yep, smuggle for six in the hand. And he said he just says on attack exhaust a ground unit. He's a whip it too, the rank. Um, yeah. Very very good awesome. in Fennec. Fantastic. Um, won me a game when I was able to pay five ambush it in. Yep. Actually, I didn't pay five. Fennec was out. I paid pay four. four. Fed, like ambushed him in and tapped their ray to stop oh, them from yes. being able to. Is that a two for one? It absolutely sure is. I took out a, I took out something and then and tapped down. Um, and if they don't claim, that's deadly because your first action is swing, tap yeah. that down. Like we saw Grogu when he first came out and we're like, man, Grogu's really good consistent tap. This guy's consistent tap and damage. Yeah, absolutely. For an like aggressive just, price. Tag. Yeah. Um, I think this card is underrated. I think this card is very, yeah. very good and is very, very disruptive. Um, I would love to build something with probably Mandalorian or something that could yeah. bring him, but Fennec is the key one that that I think is just going to be able to it's, use it it's so like well. This card and Coruscant Dissident were made for Fennec. Yeah, absolutely. So These I think, on attack triggers that are just like... Yeah, like the Fennec deck has a huge bump in upgrades since I've been playing pre-release and going... I didn't know these were cards. Like, there's that. There's mm. a liberated slave. That's a three cost, three five Wookie droid Twi'lek fringe. Sure. Yep. Whatever keywords, but it's a three five three cost. I can ambush him. That's huge. Yeah. Like last game on the gameplay, there were a lot of units there where I was like ambush and trade. Where afterwards, cards like Cassian got released, and I was like, oh my god. So put uh, put Cassian in that deck, and let me tell you, it's disgusting. Oh, yeah. Cassian in pre-release as well. He's a three cost three five, annoying to deal with. Smuggle him out and get the win. It's just like when someone plays a Falcon against you yeah, in pre-release, absolutely. and you're like, hmm, hmm, cool, and they just hit you, and you're like, okay. So being able to get that, and especially in like a red hero, because red hero ray has been pretty common. I've seen a lot of red. I, hero ran, ray. I ran red red hero yet yeah, red yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. red hero ray today. Uh, it is very fun. Um, able to get those cards out. I did have a Cassian. Um, and it's exactly yeah, it what we thought good. it was. Just being able to buff. Like yeah. I've seen so many people just be like follower of the way, and then buff it straight away, and then play another two cost, and you're just like, oh my god. Yeah. Rickety quad jump is really cool too. Yeah, I found that really good one, really, really rickety quad, quad wow, rickety I cannot quad talk, jumper. um, is very, very cool, <laughs> um, I don't, run, I didn't hit a lot, but just having it hit once or twice, like, feels really good, feels really yeah. good getting I, that plus I, one, plus one token. I swung and flipped and hit, like, so I played at turn one, and my turn two play was, um, follower of the way, mm-hmm. I swung, and I hit, and I was like, Oh my god! Put a counter on the follower of the way, Very and then nice. like next turn I was like, "Let's go! Let's swing it for four. Yeah, and just getting in there. Um, I was swinging for three, and I was like, "Oh, this is so good!" And then I got like a van brace on him, and it was just. Oh, Can we talk about upgrades? 
upgrade there are so upgrade. many upgrades going around. Uh, I thought it would be tough to get enough upgrades to really run something, um, but I would. I, I, I'm very keen to run something like a Gar Saxon list because those oh God, upgrades like are everywhere. I see so many Van Braces because that that bastard is a common. common. Come. And he's just there doing shit. He's just two two tap the shit down. Thrower. I oh, got flamethrower oh, in, my, flame in my first pre-release. I got flamethrower, and I was playing red, green, boba. I flipped boba, slapped a flamethrower on him. That was game. Yeah, he that's, was just punching Jova. in for like five every turn and just going, just oh, it was insane. Mm. Just boba's wild. Absolutely, um, that that that, that flamethrower is absolutely nutty. Yeah. Um, and the van braces as well, very very good. Um, I had the combination of. Foundling and Mandalorian armor oh. that came up surprisingly often that I was space. able to. They were, were both hyperspace, so I'm very excited about that. Um, but just Mandalorian armor by itself is just shield yeah. as well, nutty. Um, but yeah, just super happy with and in terms how that, good the upgrades are, and as they're meant to be, a really really powerful use. Well, this. the flip side of that, cards are destroyed. Disabling Fang Fighters in this set. Mm. It's really good. Really, really good. Um, and one other, I believe it's 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 ev- is it like evidence gather evidence or something like that. It's a three cost event, and it's you may uh, attach a gain control of a uh, three cost or less upgrade and attach it to a unit you control. Yeah, so that is so big in pre-release. Yeah, that is so massive. big. Because you can, someone plays like That's a... That's a rep, right? Yeah. Someone plays like a rose and you're like, whoa, pay three, take her shield. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's nice. Rose as well. Very, very good. Yep. Very, very good. Yes, she is. Rose we knew that, though. Um, we she knew was that, just but... so Woo-hoo. good. She coming in and you're like, nice. And then she swings and you're like, rose. Ro. Yeah. But um, yeah, being able to take upgrades from people is absolutely wild. Mm-hmm. Absolutely agree with that. Um, pre Vizsla. I've seen a couple of people pull him, yep. and that's just nutty that as well. Legendary? Being able to pull, wrong, <laughs> nope. it's rare. Um, so good, so so good. He's an eight seven, seven cost eight seven. <sighs> Jeez, Jeez, Louise. here he is. Like mm. no, absolutely. I think there's a lot of really cool stuff that mm-hmm. you can do with a few different things, but um, I think there's a lot more variation too. I did think that Ray was probably going to take a little bit of a high road. Um, but there's a lot more that came that 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 has come through mm-hmm. that I've been playing that makes it a lot closer than I was expecting it to be, Absolutely. which does just make it a much better experience. sealed experience. Overall, the sealed experience is incredible. Mm. Like it's actually incredible. It's the most fun I've ever had in sealed ever. No, absolutely, I completely agree with that. And this sealed experience has been just fun. It's just fun, fun, fun. We're halfway through, we're and we're only halfway through. Very keen to do more. Um, we're probably going to leave it here. Um, and so, a little bit of a shorter one, but a nice check out of, of yeah. our little thing. You get, so, get to see some opening live on camera with a showcase, no less. With a showcase, uh, the Jabba is here. He's ready to go, and you will be seeing him in the future. Oh, yeah. Check out the gameplay to check out our kind of... Um, the gameplays will be in the similar thing of if you watched our showdown video... Um, of where it's kind of um, talking p- p- yeah. p- POV kind of style. Um, so check those out. They're going to be really interesting. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.